Well, this came out of nowhere. Skyrim has a wide variety of collectible ingredients, and in today's video, we'll be figuring out if they have any real life basis and or applications. Yes, I suck at intros, moving on. Now I'm going to be explaining how we'll be going about this. You can skip ahead to this timestamp if you just want to get on with the content, but like always, I recommend you stay and listen. With that said, things to keep in mind. Number 1. We'll be taking every single alchemic ingredient from base Skyrim and the two relevant DLCs. And we'll be figuring out if they have any real life effects when consumed, chomped, or gobbled up. We'll also be taking a look at any real life inspirations for the creatures of Skyrim whenever we can. Number 2. There's a lot of ingredients. To make this smorgasbord more palatable, we'll be splitting the ingredients by their origin. So, from least to most intelligent, we got arthropods, fish, bird, then mammals. Plants, mushroom, and everything else will be for a second video. Cause, again, there sure are a lot of ingredients. Number 3. In-game ingredient effects are mostly random and won't be mentioned. Number 4. This is mostly for returning viewers. This video would be more analytical, cause I actually have basis for almost all of these, rather than just being bullshit for a quarter of them. Hope you guys still enjoy this. And that's it. Who said video games can't be educational? First of many, we have insects, arachnids, and crustaceans. Crustaceans are obviously nutritious and tasty, but insects are equally good for you surprisingly. They are rich in protein, healthy fats, iron, calcium, and low in carbs. In fact, our report claims that insects are just as, if not more, nutritious than common meats such as beef. Just make sure you cook them properly, of course. Bees! Ah! Bees are actually roasted and eaten in certain places like Hawaii, in their own honey nonetheless, which is kinda messed up. Skyrim beehives are very different from regular beehives. There's no such thing as a beehive husk, exactly, but the beehive in Skyrim resembles these old beekeeping hives. Though you can't eat a beehive husk because they don't exist, you can eat honeycomb. Honeycomb is composed of edible wax and pure honey and is completely edible. Honey has antimicrobial properties and can kill antibiotic resistant bacteria. But I suggest you don't eat honeycomb straight up or you'll be like this guy. So honey. I'm grouping all these winged beauties in one because they're all inedible pretty much. There's like hundreds of blue butterflies, and thousands more just regular butterflies. Regular butterfly wings are harvested from monarch butterflies, which are actual critters in both Skyrim and real life. Nothing else here to say, except how much of a monster the dragonborn is for pulling their wings off. There's numerous brown and grey moths out there, but I'm gonna go with this one, the brown shaded grey moth. Luna moths, delightfully, are actual real things, and look majestic. They can be found all over North America. By that I mean USA and Canada. Mexico will always be Central America in my eyes. In a world of dragons, dark wings are the dragonflies of Tamriel pretty much. Dragonflies are either boiled or fried in Indonesia and are eaten as special treats and apparently taste like soft shell crab. Ash hopper jelly is pretty much the blended guts of these things which resemble grasshoppers or crickets. There is such a thing as grasshopper juice and it's apparently rich in antioxidants, protein, vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Yummy? Of course, you can cook them. There's even a detailed recipe right here. Enjoy! Mud crabs are usually found at the muddy estuaries and mangroves of Africa, Australasia, and Asia. Chitin, at least in arthropods like crabs, are the major constituent in the exoskeleton of arthropods. It helps in protecting their delicate guts. Chitosan, a chitin derivative, is used for stuff like bandages to promote wound healing by preventing dehydration and contamination. This is a load of barnacles. Yes, barnacles are arthropods. Moving on. The thing with barnacles is that the most common variety, the acorn barnacle, has nothing to eat inside. However, certain barnacles are edible in places like Japan, Spain, and Portugal. Spiders lay eggs many ways, the least terrifying of which is where they would cover the eggs with a sort of spider silk blanket. This includes the Mediterranean black widow spider a poisonous spider which the frostbite spider might be based on. Frostbite spider eggs are typically found in these large egg sacs covered in, you guessed it, spider silk. By the way, you can eat spider eggs whole, and as long as the spider isn't poisonous, are safe and nutritious. Delicious. 
The bioluminescent fireflies, as a defense mechanism, reflex bleed, releasing blood mixed with toxic chemicals which can cause heart problems. It's a missed opportunity on the Elder Scrolls team to include poison damage as one of the effects when you eat this ingredient. But yeah, that's it for the Torchbag Torox. First of all, yes, the Chorus is an insect. Moving on. The Chorus isn't really based on any specific insect, though the regular ones appear to be a mix between a stag beetle and an ant, while the hunters resemble praying mantises, all of which lay eggs. Most fish are edible. In fact, fish are an important part of a healthy, well-balanced diet and tend to be a good source of protein, vitamins, and especially omega-3 fatty acids for your heart. Likewise, the eggs are good sources of protein and omega-3 as well. Though you would have to eat more eggs than fish to get the same amount. These four are just straight up fish. Does the dragonborn just stuff whole fishes in their pocket? Abyssinian is just a west side of Cyrodiil. Real life longfins, also called roundheads or spiny basslets, are pretty much elongated fishes found in the Indian Ocean and Western Pacific Ocean. The closest species that resemble it is this one, the longfin blue daniel. Spade tail guppies are a real thing, and they actually resemble our Cyrodiilian ones really well. His carp is obviously some type of carp. Personally, I think it looks like a goldfish, which is actually a carp. Who knew? Beta albi marginata, which lives in the streams of Borneo, seems to be a match to our river Betty, wherein Betty is presumably a cute nickname for the beta. Slaughterfish. At first, I thought these annoying hostile aquatic creatures are a mix between a piranha and an alligator, but to my surprise, there's this thing. An alligator gar. A pretty much spitting image of the slaughterfish. Of course, they're much bigger. Alligator gar eggs are bright and are actually poisonous. Alligator gar scales have been used to make arrowheads and jewelry. Alligator gar eggs don't resemble their Skyrim counterpart at all honestly. The ones in Skyrim are massive. And speaking of eggs, salmon roe or salmon eggs is a delicacy in places like Japan and Alaska and is mostly used for sushi and caviar respectively. They taste salty and like fish pretty much. Netch appear to be closer to jellyfish than actual fish, but I'm putting them here cause, well, they're close enough. Jellyfish don't actually make jelly, so I'm assuming Todd Howard is just using Spongebob logic. Now we got birds. Now there's only really three class of ingredients for birds. Eggs, feathers, and parts. Ah, the classic chicken egg. Nothing more to say aside from the fact that chicken eggs are massive in-game. They're filled with fat, iron, vitamins, and minerals. Staple breakfast alongside bacon, for some reason. All these eggs share these traits. If you're thinking about nicking a majestic hawk's nest for a quick breakfast, you're sadly out of luck. Taking eggs from nests has been illegal since 1954. Aww, look at these things. They're so cute and robust. That's a thrush, which is a family of bird that can be found all around Europe. Holy sh**, these things are adorable. I'm so glad I got this video idea. Anyways, this is a rock warbler, one word, which is a species of bird endemic to the state of New South Wales in Australia. Ever wondered why we never eat feathers? Because one, they're disgusting, and two, even if you don't mind number one, we can't digest them. It's a shame too, because they're actually full of protein. Hawk feathers are just standard hawk feathers, there's that. Shooting down hawks is frowned upon, but I'm sure they shed every now and then. Terns are these cool looking seabirds that can be found worldwide, and you can find them at seas, rivers, and wetlands. I just want to reiterate how cool they look, there should honestly be a Pokemon based on them. Like Articuno looks like them a bit I guess. Yes, I'm putting the Hagraven as a bird. I mean look at this abomination. Her dad probably found like a chicken sexy, I don't know. Joking aside, Hagravens are a fusion of a woman and a crow. Crows, like most birds, are edible. But considering they eat like dead bodies, I don't recommend you shoot down these black boys that came out wrong. The entirety of a bird, for the most part, is edible. This includes the beak. They are tough however, cause they are made out of carotene, the same stuff that makes up fingernails. Now we get to these milk makers. There's quite a variety of the ingredients, so we'll just split them by beasts and homo sapiens. Then I'll be splitting them further by body part. All of these are long teeth pretty much. I just wanna say, it's really hard to look for material on eating teeth, cause every time I look it up on Google, I get articles on teeth care and how animals use their teeth. Boar tusks aren't really eaten anywhere, 
though someone made this really cool boar tusk medicine container. Ivory can be obtained from walrus, narwhals, and of course, elephant tusks. Ivory powder is used in Chinese medicine and is said to purge toxins from the body and give better complexion. Yoinking ivory tusks from African and Asian elephants is illegal, which is great cause poor land tanks, man. The saber-toothed cat is a predatory beast that roamed the cold earth 11,000 years ago. The long pointy things are not tusks, but are teeth. Tusks are basically teeth that are evolved to give advantages to certain species of animals. In any case, fuck the saber cats in the game for killing me every time I start a new character. Aside from being used as traditional Chinese medicine, shed elk and deer antlers are actually popular dog chews. Essentially, they're good for cleaning teeth and are rich in calcium. Rats are actually a delicacy served in places like Finland. I'm not gonna show any pics. You could just look those up. But they look like they're eaten whole, save for the hair. As long as the rat isn't sick. They're all coo for the barbecue. No, not that bear. No, not that bear. There you go. Real bear claws are fucking massive, first of all. Bear claws do not have any proven medical or nutritional merit, but they are sold as jewelry. I can't find anything relevant on eating cat eyes. Fish eyes, though, are apparently delicious and help with memory loss. How about that? There aren't any trolls in real life. The conventional troll, I mean. There are two kinds of fat. Good fat and bad fat. I really doubt that pure fat from a gorilla-looking motherfucker would do you any good other than dying from a heart attack before a dragon does it for you. First one of the Homo sapien class of creatures, we got the Falmer, also known as the Ice Elves or Snow Elves. For some reason, the Dragonborn chose to throw out these blind bastard's ears and thought, hmm, this'll make a good potion. In any case, I'm grouping all of these together because they're pretty much the same thing. Human, or at least humanoid, flesh. Michael Stevens made an entire video on consuming your own flesh, and I really doubt I can explain it to you all any better than he did. The TLDR is that human flesh apparently tastes like veal, assumedly with all the nutrients of typical meats. There is not much on human hearts, but beef hearts on the other hand taste like, well, beef. Unfortunately, there isn't much in the way of Skyrim lore for vampire dust. No one knows how the Dragonborn extracts it. I mean, for all we know, it's just vampire roblent. But I'm assuming that vampire dust is equivalent to cremation ash. Now, cremation is total annihilation of a corpse, destroying almost any organic matter or bodily fluids. Human ashes are not toxic, but it's highly recommended that people don't eat it. And that's about it. Like I stated at the start of the video, part 2 will have the rest of the ingredients. Subscribe so you'd get updated when I drop the sequel. And while you're down there, why not leave a like and a comment too. I'll be doing videos on various games by the way. I'll still be making League of Legends videos sometimes. But I'm trying to avoid being known as like a League YouTuber. I really want to have a more varied catalog. So yeah, that's about it. Salamat at pag-ingat kayo.